Welcome back to another episode of the Mars Hydro SP250 and the Pepper Plant pH test. It has been quite some time now since I planted these and they now have their first true leaves. So what we're gonna do is choose what plant we wanna use for each container and then remove the rest. After that, what we're gonna do is mix up the solution. We're gonna adjust its pH and then put it in each respective container. But before we do that, I wanna mention kind of, uh, if anyone who's followed along with this channel I, you know, you know that I grow watermelons outside each year in my outside garden, and uh, I try growing different melons. And you know, I've tried growing really large ones. I've tried growing orange ones, yellow ones, uh, different types of red ones, and I use different techniques as well, whether I uh, top dress with grass or leaves, stuff like that. So, anyone who's followed along with this channel, I do have those uh, sprouts started. I'll show you those right now. I got these sprouts started under these QG LED lights. I really like these lights as far as. Uh, how they give nice, tight, compact growth. So I'm just using these for seed starting for right now. But you can see they're coming up. Uh, right here, the two bins on the right-hand side, these are the oblong red melons. I don't remember the exact name, but this is just kind of like a typical melon. And over here on the left, these are the oblong yellow melons. Uh, grow these before. These are actually seeds from another year, I think 2017, maybe 2016. And it was really good, so I saved the seeds. But these just started coming up yesterday, and you can see that they're growing pretty well. I actually got these on top of a heat mat. There's a board heat mat, piece of cardboard to separate this plastic bin. Um, I only grabbed this plastic bin because it was a it was a bin I was actually using for hydroponics before, and I had holes already cut in the top of it, so it kind of made it perfect to keep a little bit of heat and humidity in there, but not too much. So I just, just had laying around. I grabbed it real quick, but works really well. I'm going to be doing actually a time lapse of my garden for the entire season. So from the end of May all the way through August, there's gonna be a time lapse of the watermelons growing uh, through all those three to three and a half months with an outside time lapse camera. So if you're interested in that, go ahead and follow along, click subscribe if you haven't already. Okay, so here's the bins we're gonna be using. These are the same bins I used in a previous video where I grew lettuce with different pH levels. If you haven't seen that, it's gonna be right up here. Uh, so what we're gonna do now is grab a a gallon container, we're gonna mix up some solution and uh, pH it. So here's what I'm using as far as nutrients go. Uh, this is a Flora Micro, Flora Grow, Flora Bloom, so it's a Flora series, obviously. Um, you can get these in a full kit on Amazon if you'd like. Uh, I get the one for hard water as far as a Flora Micro because I do use tap water. Uh, it just has less calcium in it. So what I'm gonna do is pretty much just use the general purpose mixture on here general purpose mild vegetative 111 it's easiest to do that way uh, at least until they start blooming and ripening and then we'll go on to that phase but what we're doing right now is we're just going to mix up this batch here uh, and then we're going to adjust it with pH down or pH up so basically what these containers are going to have is going to be pH of 5.5 6.5 and 7.5 another youtuber uh, suggested me doing it that way and I completely agree with it so I am doing this this way um, the lettuce thing, uh, the lettuce video is actually uh, a much wider range of pH. Uh, what this video more is about, this whole series is about, is just to kind of see what happens if, if you don't uh, pH your water after you mix up your solution um, and, you, and you don't continue monitoring the pH as you grow. It's like, how much does it really affect the growth? Is it really that big of a deal if you don't uh, pH your solution? And the way that we're gonna do this uh, we're not gonna be adjusting the pH on a daily basis because it can fluctuate uh, quite a bit no matter what you do. Um, you don't wanna overdo it with pH up or pH down. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna make up a whole new solution. We're gonna change the solution out in these bins once a week and we're going to adjust that solution so that way we keep it uh, pretty consistent as far as the pH goes, as consistent as you can be. So as far as how I mix up the solution when I do small batches like this, I just use a gallon container that I've repurposed uh, just because it's so easy just to measure everything out then and shake it up. So I'm going to go over this just one time in this series for those of you who don't know. Uh, the way that I do this, I just take whatever I need out of one of these containers, measure it out, and I'll dump it in the water and then shake it up and then do the next one. You never want to mix all of these at once. You only want to mix uh, starting with this one right here. See how I have a label on the top just so it reminds myself. <laughs> so you want to mix the mar micro first, shake up the solution, then mix in the high, uh, the floor grow, shake it up, then a floor bloom, shake it up. Uh, once you've done that, uh, you wanna test the pH of it with whatever thing you have to test the pH with. 
Uh, normally, you don't really have to test the pH if you are using these because this is gonna make your water, if your water is slightly neutral or very close to neutral already, it's gonna make it about 6.5. Um, but if you have different tap water, uh, whether you know, it might be more acidic or more alkaline, you might need to check your pH. But for me, I don't really need to do that because it's always gonna be the same. Um, but anyways, what we're going to do for this series to do this experiment, we're gonna use the pH down. So the way I'm gonna do this is just put uh, one drop in at a time and shake it up uh, until the pH comes out to be what I need it to be. So I've got my solution all mixed up here and what I'm doing to test pH for this experiment, normally I wouldn't do it this way. I would just use the pH test kit that comes with the pH up, pH down. Um, I'm using the, my aquarium master kit and that's because I can see individual numbers a lot easier. I don't have a, a pen to test this with. I really would like one. Hey, you wanna sponsor me? <laughs> um, anyways, I can see the color of the solution with more precision than the one that comes with that pH up, pH down, because that's pretty much just four, five, six, or seven, and then somewhere in between, if you can really tell the color difference, sometimes it's hard. So with this, it's a lot easier to see. So this solution here is right at 6.5, or very, very close to it. And that's, that's when, this one is the one that's gonna go into the middle container for the 6.5 solution. And then we're gonna do the same thing for the other ones. And for this one, I did use the pH up, pH down test kit, test solution. Um, just because my aquarium one doesn't go that low because you wouldn't have fish in a pH of 5.0 anyway. So uh, I used it and it's not gonna come up the same way on the camera just because of the white balancing, but um, this is right about between 6.0 and 5.0 as far as the color goes, kind of a yellowish orangey color. So we're at about 5.5 right there. And here's the last batch. This is the high pH range. And we're right at about 7.5, 7.6 on that chart. And this actually took a lot of pH up to actually get it to that point. Um, as far as the pH down goes to become more acidic, it took about maybe seven drops in this gallon. Uh, this here, where I added the pH up, took probably 40 or 50 drops to get it up to just 7.5, 7.6 roughly. And we got it all set up here. We are off to the races. I've chosen plants to where they're all about even. And because of the nature of this light being a strip light and there's actually a separation in the center, there's no real hot spot. So as far as the light intensity, they're all receiving about the same light intensity. Uh, I can test that with my Apogee parameter. Um, I am growing this in the Kratky method because if I was to aerate the water at all, that is gonna throw off the pH and that's gonna be very difficult to do any kind of comparison as far as pH goes. Um, also at the end of this video series, which is not gonna be that long, um, there is going to be a time lapse of this entire grow. So I got my uh, Brino TLC 200 Pro and it's going to be time lapsing this uh, pretty much at the same time as we're time lapsing the watermelons outside. So these are going to take probably about 90 days. I'm not going to be uploading videos every single week because it's going to get kind of boring. These pepper plants uh, do take a while. Um, not sure, it might go a little bit quicker because these are jalapeno. I don't remember how long it took the last time to grow jalapeno. I know for a fact that um, cayenne peppers, um, those take a while to grow, uh, 90 days in total, uh, depending. These might take a little bit less, but it's not gonna be a 30 day thing like the lettuce because these are gonna go through uh, various growth phases, especially the end part where they're actually growing the peppers. So that's about it for this episode. We'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.